Now, if you've been to Universal Orlando at any point in the past couple of years, you may likely be familiar with what's called a Tribute Store. The Tribute Store is a seasonal shopping location found in Universal Studios Florida specifically that acts not only as a place to buy merchandise, but also a place to immerse you with locations and Easter eggs based on that store's general theme. They rotate out for Mardi Gras, the holidays, ride openings, etc. However, there's one seasonal event forever linked with the Tribute Store, its history, and its success, and that is of course Halloween Horror Nights. Not only did the Tribute Store begin with this event, but these stores are the most popular and talked about throughout the year. So with this video, I really wanted to look back at those great Tribute Stores and break down why I think they really defined the Tribute Store model and how they continue to expand on the concept year after year. Now while the first official Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store did open in 2015, it would be quite different from what we would get in later years. Located in the Revenge of the Mummy extended queue, this was developed developed as a spot to find any of that year's specialty merchandise, as it was the 25th year of the event, whilst also featuring props from past event years, as a tribute to Halloween Horror Nights. While there were a lot of references to houses and scare zones, this was more focused on being a retail location, without much theming besides the props themselves. However, the reception amongst fans showed Universal that a specialized retail space themed to Halloween and HHN was popular, and worth bringing back in the following years. The next few tribute stores became more elaborate with each entry, with different areas of the store themed to the different movie franchises featured at that year's event. These displays mostly consisted of mannequins of the main characters, wall art, and maybe some props, with 2018's tribute store being the most detailed with full sets for both of its properties. However, 2019 would change the trajectory of the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store and show off what the creative team could really do with the concept. Because Halloween Horror Nights 29 was a big year already. Six different IPs, ranging from 80s classics like Ghostbusters and Killer Clowns to modern favorites like Stranger Things and Us. And with so many IPs, Universal went big with the Tribute Store, bringing us our first entry with a true exterior facade and the most elaborate sets we've seen up to that point. You'd enter through the mouth of a cartoonish black cat into a dingy carnival foyer, likely inspired by the visual aesthetics of House of a Thousand Corpses and Us. From there, you'd follow into the Ghostbusters room, being greeted by Slimer and surrounded by tons of memorabilia from the movies, making you feel as if you just entered Ghostbusters HQ, complete with a very photogenic wall with the infamous logo. From there, you'd go into the Stranger Things room, which was a clear improvement on the 2018 original, transporting you to the dark dimension of the Upside Down. Finally, you end up in a lab to represent the Universal Monsters house. Here you would encounter many trinkets and oddities relating to the classic films in a creepy closing room for this fantastic store. The 2019 Tribute Store was not only great in bringing exposure to the location, but also in truly immersing guests within the different IPs that were featured in it. As I mentioned before, 2018 started to dip into this idea a little bit, but it's here where we see it truly come to life. And the blending of memorable scenes and imagery from classic and modern properties immediately made it worth going back into to search for all those easter eggs, even if you're not buying anything. And speaking of easter eggs and nostalgia, Halloween Horror Nights 30th year will be the next up, and they would have a lot in store when it comes to its offerings, however, it was cancelled due to the pandemic, which radically shifted everything within the theme park world to say the least, Halloween Horror Nights 30 was put on hold with no event during 2020. However, Universal did set up a tribute store that year, and while 2019 was the year that I think truly defined the tribute store formula for success, 2020 was the year they really needed to bring it, because there was nothing else going on for much of the season. And bring it, they did. From the exterior facade, which was pretty accurate for the crash and burn that was 2020, it was clear that the creative team wanted to make this store fit within the spooky atmosphere of HHN, but also be eye-catching enough to beckon you inside. Upon entering, you find yourself in another foyer which seems to be collapsing in on itself, continuing the aesthetic of the facade. And that would perfectly transition into the first main room, themed once again to the Universal Monsters, specifically Dr. Frankenstein's lab, complete with turning gears and a covered up creature in the center. With this room, Universal won up to their previous lab setting, adding themed lighting, projection effects, and an overall kinetic energy to the space. 
From there, you travel to Jack's Carnival of Carnage, where a static yet very realistic Jack the Clown stood amongst the orange leaves and pumpkins, truly capturing the feeling of Halloween. This would be the hub for much of the retrospective merch sold that year, and the room also contained many nods to HHN past, most notably the large banners featuring the other Halloween Horror Nights icons scattered about. This was definitely the fan favorite room as it captured the nostalgia for both the event and the holiday pretty well. From there, the references would continue as 2019's blood red hallway would now be littered with posters, photos, and maps from the event's long history. The final room, which wasn't initially available when the store opened, would be themed to Beetlejuice, featuring iconic set pieces from the film like the gravesite, Dante's Inferno Room, and of course, the Beetle Snake. Overall, the 2020 Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store did a great job at compensating for the lack of an event that year. Of course, three modified houses would be introduced later on into the season, and it was clever of Universal to include two of those houses, Bride of Frankenstein Lives and Beetlejuice, as themed offerings within the Tribute Store. And I think this store's success really comes in the amount of minor details that were incorporated into each different setting, fleshing out the space and transporting you into the worlds they were creating. While 2019 set the bar high, 2020 raised it, and it led to Universal going all in on the concept during the following year. 2021 would be the true 30th anniversary of Halloween Horror Nights, and with the cemented popularity of the location, they could use the tribute store to go all in on the event's history, just like they did six years prior. The facade for the HHN 30 tribute store was bold, a maroon manor which purposely stuck out in its New York setting, yet did so in the most darkly elegant fashion. You would once again enter through the familiar foyer, however, rather than transitioning into a room based on one of the event's major IPs, you'd find yourself in an eclectic collection room, surrounded by cases containing many easter eggs relating to HHN past. Props, concept art, and other goodies would call back to fan favorite houses in a similar way that the original store did, however here they slip into the cracks of this larger haunted house storyline, acting as little things for fans to keep an eye out for. If the callbacks weren't obvious by this room, however, the next room was a true homage to the HHN icons, as portraits and busts of the characters line the house's library. While the last door's extended hallway featured images from the event's past, here it became a portrait hallway, beginning a trend of inserting guest photos into the store that still continues today. And while not specifically themed to Beetlejuice, the next room brought you into a conservatory, which featured purple and green lighting and was stocked with that year's Beetlejuice merchandise. This room, while not as stacked with easter eggs like the past two, brings the story forward and uses its effects to create a completely different atmosphere than the ones that came before. The final room led you outside of the house, notably featuring a crash carrot en route to Shady Brook Asylum. If you couldn't tell already, this is my favorite of the Halloween horror its tribute stores. Not just because it slips in so many references to the past, but also creates an original and self-contained story. And that idea of creating a tribute store based on an original concept would bleed in to their next installment in 2022. Beginning with many clever clues placed at the end of the 80s themed summer tribute store, the theme of last year's Halloween Hornets version was the subject of discussion amongst fans until it opened alongside the event. In a resourceful move, the theater for facade for the summer tribute store was kept and refitted to fit the HHN one, which despite it not being as bombastic as the last facade, fit into the general story quite well. From vibrant posters outside and decor within the foyer, this store was generally themed to an old-timey haunted dark ride. Moving into the first room, you'd enter a pumpkin patch, where the illuminated faces of jack-o'-lanterns fill the space, and crows can be heard calling in the background. The ride would then take you to the Hollow Hill Cemetery, which contained many distinct graves complemented with simple animatronics of ghouls and zombies. The photo hallway would continue the cemetery theming, becoming a mausoleum with plaques containing guest photos. From there you'd enter the Witch's Cottage, where bubbling cauldrons and plenty of potions surrounded you, and very neat video projections simulated both standard and stained glass windows. Finally, you'd enter the Hollow Hills Halloween Festival, which would consist of a few 
few storefronts all decorated for the Halloween season. Overall, this store isn't as visually complex as the previous one. Honestly though, it doesn't need to be considering its concept. The store really sticks to the Halloween dark ride idea, with many of the rooms featuring relatively simple decor and cheesy yet charming effects. Also the detail of the ride's track on the floor all throughout the store is a nice touch that not only adds to the theming, but also affects the movement within the store. With no IPs and no icons, the creative team was really able to maximize on a concept that not only fits into the classical Halloween theme they went for for the entire event that year, but also into the neighboring scare zone, Sweet's Revenge, allowing for some fun tie-in value and Easter eggs. And that brings us to now, nearly eight years after the original Tribute Store opened its doors. While Halloween only happens once a year, these stores radically changed not only how Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Stores work, but how other Tribute Stores function. But overall, it showcased the desire for highly themed retail in theme parks, specifically relating to the spooky season, of course. Halloween, and specifically in this case Halloween Horror Nights, has seen a bit of a marketing and merchandising renaissance over the past few years, as the event has grown beyond a place to scare and be scared. The imagery from HHN, whether that be based on the original lore, IP, or general event theming is super desirable, so in retrospect, creating a retail space that feels like the main attraction, putting you in that world, would be super popular. So popular that they can branch out into more than one spooky tribute store. 2021 saw the debut of another tribute store-esque space in the Lost Continent of Islands of Adventure, which is now a year-round Halloween offering, but also changes for different seasons. And just last year, during the extended Revenge of the Mummy refurbishment, Sahara Traders saw a Universal Monsters-themed overlay that repurposed many of the props from past HHN tribute stores. All of this being said, Halloween Horror Nights tribute stores work, and it's clear that the creative team puts a lot of emphasis into these stores specifically, even teasing them months and months before they actually arrive. And I think that leads to an experience that's truly for the fans. As Halloween Horror Nights becomes more popular by the year, the dedicated fan base for the event is growing bigger and bigger. And having something like the Tribute Store, which, again, could just be something basic, like a little merch stand, but isn't. It's something completely different, and something uniquely spooky. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive into the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store and its history, and why it works so well. Um, I really wanted to do a video talking about the Tribute Stores, as they are one of my favorite new additions to Universal over the past few years. And I want you to let me know in the comments which HHN Tribute Store is your favorite, or just which Tribute Store in general is your favorite. I really loved the HHN 30 Tribute Store, uh, but also I really liked the 80s themed Tribute Store we got last year, the Velocicoaster Store. I think all of them definitely have their merits. Again, I really loved making this video, so I hope you had a great time watching it. And if you did enjoy it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned for more HHN and theme park related videos. And I, of course, we'll see you all next time.